I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue They scream that only I'll be saved They told myself the line that I just let it float away Yeah, I let it float away I let it float away I let it float away Float away, float away to Dubuque, Iowa. We're going to do six days on the river, do 180 miles and eight locks, and uh, should be a great day, great trip. Um, just Heather and I, so it'll be a lot of fun. We'll do some things we haven't done, like go through a lock. We haven't gone through a lock all year, and so we'll go through eight locks over the next two days, and then uh, eight on the way back. Uh, so a total of 16 lockages, which will be good. Got to do some planning, route planning, where we're going to go, how far we're going to go, what marinas we're going to stay at, and just kind of test all the systems. You can see the river's about 10 feet deep. I've got the autopilot on, so we're just driving by autopilot. I've got my rear-facing camera, so I can see what's coming up behind me. The engines all look good. Just uh, going along pretty much at hull speed and I've got my Navionics chart up on the display uh, going about 8.3 miles an hour or 7.1 knots going down river so I use on my displays I keep uh, this one I either use for radar or sonar and right now I have it on sonar because it's radar is not necessary this one I really keep primarily on my rear facing camera of the boat so I can see what's coming up from the helm station since we put on the canvas uh, canvas back on the boat which we love because it's increased our living space um, I can't see very far behind the boat so I installed a rear facing camera that I can display on the helm and that it sees me that allows me to see what's coming up on the back side of the boat at any time and then I just use Navionics with a GPS receiver since this is, a, is only a Wi-Fi enabled iPad. And uh, 
use that as my chart plotter. I do have chart plotters on both of these, but the maps are a little bit old, so I rely on that. So, yeah, should be a great trip. The dog's in place, Nala. Hey, Nala. Are you looking forward to going? And Heather's along as my admiral in the co-captain seat. So, Heather, what do you think? It's slow going right now because we've seen this part of the Mississippi River, so it's a little boring. It'll be interesting to at least get through the first lock because we haven't gone through a lock this year to see what's on the other side. See if anything's really changed down there. Are you excited for the trip? <clears throat> yeah, I'm excited to get down to Mew since we've never been there. Are you nervous? A little nervous. What are you nervous about? We're going to rip the vinyl on the boat. Oh. And then you're going to get mad at me. I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not worried about ripping the vinyl on the boat. I'm worried about running aground in water we don't know. Yeah, I'm a little nervous that we won't get into the marina down in Dubuque. Why is that? Because the owner or the man that's in charge of all the boat slips there. Harbor Master. Harbor Master said it was shallow. shallow. So we'll have to see. All right, that's it, huh? That's it. Up here is lock number four, the first lock. So we're coming up on that. We're just taking it slow right now because I was talking to the lock master and they have a diver in the water doing some repairs. So we're just slowly getting down to the lock and there's no barges or toes in the area. So we should be able to get straight on through. So, lock four on the upper Mississippi. This is the Alma lock. This is the little river town of Alma, Wisconsin. And there is lock four, first of eight today. Well, we are in the chamber. And they are getting ready to drop us. See the back chamber gates getting ready to close. They actually have a couple of divers working on the lock today. begin the drop process here pretty quick. What's great is having the joystick to be able to position hold. Since we're the only boat in the chamber, uh, we don't have to tie up because of our size. We can just float in the chamber while they lower it. And that makes it pretty easy for us. Well, they dropped us about six to seven feet. The doors are opening now, and we'll get underway. Well, we're at the second lock. This is lock five, just north of Winona, Minnesota. And the dog's going crazy, wants to go swimming doing a lot of construction on this lock but so far it's been a beautiful ride the river is super smooth we've only encountered four boats like I said earlier the joystick control to keep the boat centered in the lock is very very useful we'll see you in a little while well we're coming up on about 3.30 on day one and we have had about three hours of delays on locks getting down we're south of Winona now headed towards La Crosse and we're probably just going to try to get to La Crosse tonight. 
and then get up early tomorrow morning and take off for Dubuque there. Um, the river is still calm and beautiful and uh, really enjoying enjoying the slow trip. So I'll show you what it looks like. So the river remains really calm. Beautiful day, nice and cool. And we are south of Winona by about five or six miles now and headed down to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Well, it is day two. We're down in La Crosse, Wisconsin. And it is 7.40 in the morning. The fog has just burned off the river. We've been up for an hour and a half. Get ready and we are now, we are leaving our, where we anchored overnight or where we slipped and headed towards as far as we get to Dubuque today. That's my rear view mirror or my rear view camera showing the bridges of La Crosse and here is the marina we were at. Everything's looking normal on the engines, just warming up right now. Pressures all look good and we're in the middle of the channel and everything's looking good. Looking forward to a great day in boating. And we are coming in to Brownsville, Minnesota. It's south of La Crosse. It's a river community right on the river. Some beautiful homes. The fog's starting to burn off now. Heather, what do you think? I like this little community here. This brown stuff is pretty neat. Cast Very beautiful house on the end. Everything looks good on the charts. No one behind me. Instruments look good. We're going about nine and a half, ten miles per hour, about 8.3 knots at 1250 RPM. Our autopilot's engaged and we are moving on through Barnesville. Well, we have arrived at Lock 8 in Genoa, Wisconsin, and it is 9.30 in the morning, so we've made pretty good time already. We'll see how far we get to Dubuque today. It's a little bit windy and cold, but Lock 8 in Genoa, that's a good sign. So we just uh, crossed through Lansing, Iowa and we are headed, continuing to head south. We're about 10 miles from the next lock and dam. Lock and dam number nine. Trip's going well so far. So yeah, I'll turn the camera around so that you guys can see what's, what's happening. Yep, just south of Lansing, Iowa and Mississippi River Valley has opened up. You can see on the GPS map, we're down here, the next lock and dam is up here. We're about 10 miles out. Um, just spent about a half hour up on plane, kind of running the engines a little bit harder. Everything looks good. And got my GPS set up over there. We're working on autopilot and yeah, so. Great trip so far. Heather, what do you think? It's beautiful. The river is so different down here than it is up by us in Wabasha. Me. What else you got to say? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just chewing licorice. And no.
So we just made it through lock number nine and we are continuing our trip south. There is lock nine in the rearview mirror. We got very lucky. There's a tow barge coming in right there that was going to delay us for about an hour and we were able to pass him and get through. So that was awesome. And now, Heather wants to play cribbage. We haven't played all day yet. What's the score? I'm 22, you're 25. Yeah, I'm winning. So, instruments still look good. Pressures are all good. Nothing in my rearview mirror. Everything's good. We'll see you in a little bit. So we have gotten through lock 10, which is behind us. Um, a Coast Guard vessel passed us, and it looks like a barge and a freaking hauling ass uh, passed us like really fast. And we've got one lock left to Dubuque, and looking forward to getting in. It's uh, 2.40 in the afternoon. All the gauges look good, and we're making good headway. So we'll update you when we get into the vehicle. Twilight, which is a riverboat cruise. We're down here at the port of Dubuque. Sorry for the wind noise. Beautiful city harbor. Got in here about 6.30 or 7 o'clock last night. And we are going to be hanging out here. There's the Coast Guard. Managed, they uh, drop buoys in the river. There's an old paddle wheeler. Right downtown, this building here is the National Mississippi River Museum. We're gonna go to that today. But the marina is really empty. We're one of only two transient boats in the marina. But should be a great two day stay. Got to get a couple of boat projects done this morning and then we're going to go out and explore. So it's a beautiful Friday afternoon down here in Dubuque. There's Not Too Shabby resting in her slip. Doing some work on the dinghy. Got to replace a couple screws for the seat. That's why it's uncovered. This is uh, where the National Mississippi Museum is. We're going to see that. It's run by the Smithsonian. But it's a beautiful harbor, beautiful clear day. Nala, and Nala wants to go for a walk. Okay, what do you want to say? Um, that we're in Dubuque, Port of Dubuque. But I don't know if that's backwards. It might be backwards. But it says Dubuque. It says Dubuque. And we just walked four miles for a screw. <laughs> the kind of, that you put into the boat kind of screw, not that kind of screw. So we're at the National Mississippi Museum today and there is Mark Twain bench. For those of you that don't know, Mark Twain and I are related. Uh, his na real name was Samuel Clemens and my great great grandmother on my father's side was a direct cousin of Samuel Clemens. Her maiden name was Sawyer. He used that name for the 
book Tom Sawyer. And uh, so in my family legacy is a re direct relationship to Tom Sawyer. What a fabulous museum. So this is my direct relation to me, Tom Sawyer, or uh, Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain. And uh, I'm sitting here with a long lost, long lost cousin of mine. Uh, my great, great grandmother on my father's side, his maiden name was Sawyer. And her husband was Dr. Sawyer. And um, he used the name Sawyer for the book Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. And so, pretty cool to be related to Mark Twain and Samuel Clemens. Well, we're currently standing on the dredge, the black, down here at the National Mississippi River Museum. The marine has filled up a little bit. Not a whole lot, though. But there's Not Too Shabby sitting in her cradle. And there's Heather. Hi. Having a nice day. The museum's actually very interesting. It is very interesting. Well, the boat is uh, here at the museum. It's a steam-powered dredge. Had 45,000 gallons of fuel oil on it, and they burned 7,000 gallons of oil a day just to dredge the Mississippi. It was actually, this dredge was operational up until 1972 when it was decommissioned. That's kind of crazy that a steam-powered dredge was working even until then. Good morning, everyone. Sunday morning. We are just leaving Dubuque. It's about uh, 6. We left at about 6.40. It's about 6.50 now. It is a cloudy, rainy day. It's going to be a long day of boating north in locks. The locks are going to be wet. The boat is soaking. But that's what this is all about so uh, we'll show you how the trip looks on the way back you can see uh, it's kind of foggy this morning it's uh, rain it's been raining most of the evening light rain scheduled throughout the morning here um, everything looks good on the dashes just kind of idling along about 900 rpm uh, making uh, four knots right now. We just went underneath the railroad bridge in the back, and uh, yeah, so everything is looking pretty good this morning. Oh, so it's cold as hell. It's about 62 degrees. It's raining. Um, the long drive back north from Dubuque, Iowa, but we're making the best of it. We are going on plane, so it's uh, sucking a lot more gas. So it's, uh, you can see it's cloudy, overcast, and raining. Not a whole lot of traffic on the river. It's going about 3,000 RPM, which gives us about 24 and a half miles an hour, or 21.1 knots. All the gauges look good. This sucks though. Burning about 30 gallons an hour, trying to do trying to just get to the next lock for sure. We've got two locks until we get to La Crosse, which is about, oh, 55 or 60 total miles. If we can get through the next lock, uh, we can slow down and take some time, because right now it's only about 11.10 in the morning. So, push through to this next lock. Uh, I got reports on the radio that it's open, so we don't have to wait for a barge. The previous lock, we had to wait over an hour and 15 minutes for a, a barge to come through, so it did take quite a while. Uh, we'll update you a little bit later. So we're making good progress. We've made it through lock number nine, and uh, we are now in Lansing, Iowa. Say hi, Heather. Hi. Having fun? We're all cold. It's 62 degrees. 
but yeah. there's no traffic on the river because of that, so that's yeah. nice. Very quiet day on the river. And we're in Lansing, Iowa. And we're slowed down for the town and to cause no wake here. And uh, we're doing okay. All the gauges on the engine look good. We're going about eight miles an hour up river. And yeah, it's about 12.40 in the afternoon. And we've made good time so far. And we should be into La Crosse by 3.30 or four o'clock this afternoon. So I'll talk more later. Well, it's the last morning on the river. It's about 6.45 in the morning. We just uh, pulled out of La Crosse. Um, tired this morning. <laughs> the great loop. If, if you try to get up at 6 o'clock and just keep boating all day, it's really, really tiring. Um, but we got an overcast morning and uh, things are looking good on the river. It's very calm. I'll show you here in a second. Um, not too excited to get back to Wabasha and back to the world. Um, wish we could have just continued to go south on the river. That would have been ideal, but obligations. So, so you can see this morning the Mississippi is glass smooth. There's a slight mist in the air. This is downtown La Crosse, the riverfront down here. And uh, they've got a green, uh, green uh, loading dock right there. They're loading a barge this morning. La Crosse is a beautiful downtown and beautiful river area. Heather, what do you think this morning? I'm not thinking too much, it's too early. Too early in the morning to be thinking? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, gauges looking pretty good this morning, going about 930 RPM. Uh, we're in a no wake zone here in La Crosse. And uh, you can see, just crossed under this bridge right here. Uh, Going to be heading north, about uh, five miles an hour. River depth is good, 23 feet. You can see it's 650 in the morning. And uh, we're moving along pretty good. So, this will be the last day. We'll head up to Wabasha today. We've got five locks to get through. Just north of La Crosse is lock seven. And then in Dresbach, Minnesota is lock six. And then lock five and 5A is in Winona. And lock four in Alma, Minnesota. And then we'll be back to our pool in the Mississippi and Wabasha about 10 miles north of that. All right, well, just turning out of La Crosse now. You can see there's either going to be pretty good rain or it's really foggy on the river this morning. Got one bridge to go through this morning. Um, we can clear underneath, of it, underneath the bridge. We just have to lower our antennas. Otherwise, uh, bridges with or boats with a higher air draft uh, the bridge will spin around. You just have to um, call them ahead of time, and they'll open up the bridge. You know, so when tow tow traffic comes through, they uh, open that up, or other flybridge boats that can't clear. But we can clear it, so we'll just go underneath it this morning. We've already lowered our antennas, and yeah. Otherwise, heading on out. There's the Lacrosse Queen a small uh, riverboat in La Crosse and my wife doing what she does on her phone. Just reading articles. Reading the news. Reading the news all about the hurricane. Got it. And already asleep. What are we doing this morning, Heather? Playing cribbage. What's the score? Right now you're five and I'm four and you're in the lead in this game. We're the commanding lead. Oh, shut up. It's not a commanding lead. 
So interesting on the river here, there is, well, I'll show you back here. So that barge right there that's pushed up against the side of the river is waiting. And we have now passed, that was barge number five. Um, there is, I guess, some emergency dredging that needs to take place up uh, by Winona so in the last five six miles we've passed five barges pulled up against the side of the river waiting to get through locks and they've got an emergency dredger coming in somehow there was some shoaling in the center channel that uh, caused the barges not to be able to get through so they're stacked up here all up and down the river I'm sure there's I saw there's one right around the bend up over over around this bend here. There's another one stacked up there. And then I know there's a couple more up there. So there's probably a total of 10 barges that need to get through here. We're making 7.8 miles an hour, burning four gallons an hour. All the gauges look good at about 1330 RPM. And yeah, so. Rain hasn't moved in yet, but rain will be starting here in a little while. Otherwise, uh, we're about, oh, probably five or 10 miles south of Winona, Minnesota. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, coming up on lock number five, you can see that there in the distance. It's got a tow barge in it currently. And there's another tow waiting above it. So luckily we're getting up there right in between the two of them. But a lot of rain coming through, but it's pretty cool to see the clouds covering the bluffs. Here all the way up into Winona or I'm sorry, up into Wabashaw. So this is lock number five. This is the second to the last lock that we have today. This is the last video of the trip. Yep. What's up? Talk to the camera. You stop the camera. Not gonna stop the camera. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm a little teary-eyed because I'm laughing so hard because of your measurements from the lock to the marina were off. So, from the marina, or from the marina to lock number four, I guessed it was about seven miles. It might be closer to 6.5 or 6.6 .6 miles. My wife has been giving me shit for the last 10 minutes that my measurements were off and I was just kind of guessing that's my wife so, so I don't know I don't know what else to say there's our marina right there with the flag we're coming in final stretch we did 178 miles to debut 177 <laughs> miles to Dubuque and 59 uh, miles to La Crosse and 177 miles back we're on the last stretch here cloudy overcast day it's going to be good to get to the marina